Hello, I'm Gordon Lang, editor of CameraWebs.com. I'd like to give you a brief video tour around the Nikon D300S. Here it is, the D300S. This is the successor to the D300, which makes it Nikon's flagship DSLR to use a crop frame sensor, or in Nikon's terminology, the DX format. Now this kind of camera is normally sold body alone, so you've got to choose your own lens to go with it. One of the most popular choices will be Nikon's super zoom model, the 18 to 200 mm but for my money I'd go for the 16 to 85 and that's what I've got it mounted with here. This is one of the sharpest and best quality general purpose DX format lenses. And while it doesn't zoom quite as long as the 18 to 200, it does go a little bit wider to an equivalent of 24. And if you're interested in more information about this lens, check out my full review of it at cameralabs.com. Now the D300S shares a great deal of similarities with its predecessor. Both cameras share essentially the same body, the same sensor, the same 51 point autofocus system and also the same 3 inch VGA screen round the back and viewfinder with 100% coverage. So they're pretty similar models and that makes this an extremely capable, fast and strong camera. But Nikon has of course added a number of new features to the D300S so without further ado let's take a closer look at them. As always, I'm going to start with resolution, and as I mentioned a moment ago, the D300S shares the same 12.3 megapixel CMOS sensor as its predecessor. So at first it may seem slightly disappointing that Nikon's not taking the opportunity to boost the resolution, but at the same time this sensor features a really good balance between resolution and noise levels, and you can see some samples at different sensitivities in my full review at cameralabs.com. The first enhancement is a slight boost in continuous shooting speed from the 6 frames per second of the D300 to 7 frames per second now with the D300S and that's boostable to 8 frames per second if you mount the optional battery grip as long as it's running the right type of battery and I've got details of that in my review. Here's how it sounds in practice. This allows you to capture really fast action sequences. The second new feature I'd like to show you is the Virtual Horizon, inherited from the higher end D700. This operates in or out of live view, I'm showing you the live view version here, and when you've got the camera absolutely level, the horizontal line turns green in the middle. When it's yellow, the camera isn't quite level. So this is a really handy way of finding out if that camera is absolutely straight or not. Externally, the D300S greatly resembles its predecessor, but look closely and you'll notice a couple of differences. First of all, the release mode in the top left corner. The live view setting has now moved from here and in its place is a new Q mode. That stands for quiet and I'll show you exactly how that works in just a moment. On the upper right side of the camera, it's still dominated by this huge LCD information screen. Although you'll notice a clue here to one of the D300S's brand new features, indicators for different card formats. More of that in just a moment. Around the back of the camera, the same 3 inch VGA screen as before, which looks absolutely fantastic in use, whether you're playing back images, operating the camera in live view, or even just going through the menus. But now for those new features, I'm going to power the camera off and open the card slot door here. And as I alluded to it earlier, the D300S features not one, but two card slots. Here, the traditional compact flash memory card slot, and next to it, an SD memory card slot. Now the D300S has got some very clever options when it comes to using these cards. You can actually record to both cards at the same time as a backup. Or you could record RAW files to one and JPEGs to the other. So that when you've finished a shoot you could give one card to a client or an asset manager safe in the knowledge that you've got a backup on the other card. Alternatively you could configure them to just take over when the other one becomes full. Note that when you're recording movies you can't do that to both cards at the same time though. But this is a really impressive feature to find on a camera of this class. Normally you wouldn't find dual memory card slots that can record at the same time until you reach top end professional models. If I turn the camera to the other side and have a look at the many ports, as before there's an HDMI port here although it's now a mini connector, but the important new connector I want to show you here is an external microphone input. This is for the movie mode and it allows the D300S to record very high quality sound. Note that this is the first Nikon DSLR to feature an external microphone input. Next up, the new quiet mode, which as its name suggests allows you to take a picture more quietly than normal, handy for discrete situations. But just how quiet is it? Well, to show you, 
I'm going to first of all take a picture in the normal mode and then one in the quiet mode for comparison. First of all, the normal mode, and this is using a shutter speed of 1 1 25th of a second. Okay, now I'm going to turn the release mode to quiet and we'll try that once more. Now what you heard there was two separate sounds, the sound of the shutter taking the picture and then the sound of the mirror actually going back down again. And it's that mirror that's going a bit more slowly than normal. And you can also delay that process if you like for as long as you hold the shutter release button down. I'll show you that once more. So I've got my finger held down on the shutter release button and the mirror won't drop down again until I let go. I'll do that once more. Press the button, that's the picture taken and let go and that's the camera ready for action again. So maybe not massively quieter than normal, but still a little bit so, and that could still be useful in situations that are very quiet. Maybe if you're taking pictures inside a church at a wedding, or if you're taking pictures of wildlife that are particularly sensitive to sound. Now let's take a look at the live view features. Live view is no longer on the release mode dial, it's got its own dedicated button here. I'll press that, and now we're in live view mode. As always, I'll prove it by wiggling my fingers in front of the camera's lens. Now, as before, there's two different autofocus systems for live view. This is the handheld mode, which uses the traditional phase change autofocus system. You can operate it by half pressing the shutter release. So as you saw, the picture blanked out and there was some sound as it took that reading. I'll show you again. Now, the alternative mode is tripod mode. And this uses a contrast-based autofocusing system. I'll show you how that works. Now this time you've got to press the AF on button, which is to the top right of the screen. I'll press it right now. So as you can see, that takes a couple of seconds longer, but there's no interruption to the image, and it's also much quieter. I'll show you once again. Now the big advantage of this contrast-based system is that you can actually move this focusing area anywhere you want on the screen. So if you want to focus on this area up here, no problem, just move it with this controller here, press the AF on button. And once again, you're focused. You can also take a closer look at this view by pressing these magnify buttons. Here, looking closer and closer still until you're at the absolute maximum magnification here. I'm going to zoom out one step here and perform that focusing process for you once more. Now I'll zoom back out again. Now, as always, you can overlay various graphics on the screen. If I press the info button, we can first of all clear it for a nice cleaner view. Next up comes an alignment grid, and I'll make that a little bit clearer by wiggling my fingers in front of the lens. Press it once more, you get that virtual horizon which I showed you earlier. Press it again, and no, sadly, there's still no live histogram. You're back to that standard view, but it's still a very capable live view system in practice. The final headline new feature of the D300S is its movie mode, and you're watching an example of it right now. I'm stood about one meter in front of the D300S, and the sound you hear is that recorded by its built-in mono microphone. Or as I showed you a moment ago, you can alternatively connect an external microphone for better sound quality. Now the movie mode here is pretty much the same as that on the D90 and the D5000 before it. As such, it will record a maximum frame of 720p, that's 1280 by 720 pixels, and then a progressive frame rate of 24 frames per second. As before, this is encoded using the motion JPEG format. Now that might not be quite as modern as the H.264 format as Canon uses on its DSLRs, and it's certainly not as efficient. However, it is a lot easier to edit and play back on your computer. So, let's take a look at some examples of this movie mode in practice. This first sequence was filmed with the D300S mounted on a tripod and smoothly panning from left to right. And I should note that the audio you hear now is recorded by the microphones of my normal camcorder. Now, it is of course possible to zoom the lens while you're filming by simply twisting the zoom ring on the lens barrel. But it's quite difficult to do this smoothly and consistently unless you're mounted on a tripod. This is what happens when you try and do it handheld. I'm using the 16 to 85 millimeter here at about 50 mil. I'm now going to zoom it all the way in, and I've just about got away with that process. But watch what happens when I try and zoom out. When it's handheld, I've actually got to do this in two separate goes, and I'm twisting the camera body and making it more susceptible to the dreaded jello effect. It's certainly not ideal. 
it's much better to keep the camera steady and attempt not to zoom while you're filming. Here's another example fully zoomed in. I should also note that the maximum recording time in HD is about 5 minutes per clip. And even though the D300S now offers autofocus while you're filming, it's contrast based, it takes about 3 seconds to refocus on a new subject. Now one of the benefits of a camera with a large sensor for video is low noise in low light levels. As you can see here, this clip is fairly clean looking. Another benefit is a potentially shallow depth of field. As you can see here, I've effectively blurred the background. Those bandings that you can see is because of the artificial lighting indoors. The Nikon D300S is a very powerful and feature packed DSLR that exudes confidence in use. This camera is extremely tough, it feels fantastic in your hands, it's very quick in operation and it will handle almost any situation you throw at it. Of the new features, the highlights are definitely the movie mode with its external microphone input and those dual memory card slots. The card slots in particular are really special to find on a camera like this because normally you'd have to pay considerably more for them on a top end professional model. And indeed it's these card slots that really separate it from the rest of the competition. But of course the competition hasn't stood still itself. The D300S now finds itself up against an extremely tough rival in the form of Canon's EOS 7D. Most obviously in terms of numbers, the Canon looks very impressive. It has 50% more megapixels, 18 in all, and not only does it do 720p video, but it will also do Full HD, 1080p and in a choice of frame rates. So on the surface it sounds like the Canon's the better bet, but of course the numbers don't tell the whole story. There's a lot of different features and also actual performance in real life to weigh up. And to help you make the choice between these DSLRs and other choices that you may be considering, check out my full review at CameraLabs.com. There I've compared the D300S against some key rivals to help you make the right decision. So if you're in the market for a top-end DSLR, then check out my full review. As always, you'll find it at CameraLabs.com.